Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Take 5. My name is Calvin Friend, one of the volunteers at River of Life, and it's good to have you here on this foggy morning, or at least it was when I was driving in. Maybe it's better now. I certainly hope so. So years ago, a friend of mine quipped, um, and probably doesn't even remember his little quip that he made, uh, but he made the statement, uh, sometimes babies cry. And I don't even remember the context, or I, I imagine there was a baby crying, and maybe some people concerned about that. But it, the quip was, sometimes babies cry. And it, in some ways, is such a simple statement, and, and yet, in some ways, so profound. It, it was really a statement of saying, you know what, there's sometimes, there's nothing you can do. I mean, sometimes babies will cry and there are things you can do there because they're hungry or they've got a dirty diaper or they just fell down or they're overly tired. And so if you can figure out why they're crying, then you can maybe solve the problem by meeting that need. But sometimes they just cry and you can't figure out why. And so you just kind of stay with them because sometimes babies cry and sometimes people cry. I had not that long ago, uh, and, and it happens quite often when you're a chaplain, you know, nurses will encounter a patient who's crying an awful lot and so they'll call for spiritual care or they'll call for psychotherapy. Somebody to come along and, and be with this person because they're crying a lot. and and if it's uncontrollable and there doesn't seem to be a clear reason, then they want somebody to step in. And, and maybe there's some spiritual pain that they're suffering with, or maybe there's some emotional pain that they're dealing with, or maybe it's physical pain and they just haven't identified it yet. And so sometimes people cry. And so they want you to come in. And, and like I said, not that long ago, I had a patient who was crying an awful lot. And so they called me in to, to meet with the patient and see what I could do. And I just sat with her for quite a while and, and let her cry because sometimes people cry and maybe there's no solution to that problem. They just need to cry it out. And then after a while, we did end up talking a little bit more and looking for ways to handle what she was going through and, and all that sort of thing. But sometimes babies cry, sometimes people cry, and sometimes that's just all right. Uh, I'll come down sometimes and uh, back to the office after I've had a visit and maybe a patient was crying in that visit and my coworkers might say, did you make somebody cry again? <laughs> and I'll say, no, 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 I just let them cry. I gave them the opportunity because crying is not necessarily a problem that needs to be solved. Sometimes it's not a problem that needs to be solved as much as a person that needs to be understood. And I think about um, even, you know, sometimes babies or people cry, but even sometimes God cries. And I think about John chapter 11 and shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. He was at the graveside of his friend Lazarus. And there was a lot of emotion, some blame being thrown at Jesus, some sadness for the loss of a brother, but also a friend. And so all sorts of stuff going on. And Jesus, we're told, wept. And what we're not told is that people came around and tried to uh, console him tried to comfort him, tried to get him through this uh, time of crying so that he could get on with ministry or anything else. But Jesus wept. And the interpretation, the takeaway was that the people watched Jesus weep and they said, see how he loved him. So Jesus' tears weren't a problem that needed to be solved, but he was a person that needed to be understood. And I don't know if you're going to have the opportunity to encounter somebody who's crying today, maybe even a baby, maybe a child, maybe an adult, or if you yourself are the one who needs to be given permission to cry. Sometimes it happens. 
But I do wonder in that, what can that help you to understand about yourself or about the people who you're encountering or the people who are so sad at that moment? How can you understand them better? And not only understand them better, but maybe even be drawn deeper into an appreciation for who they are, for what their experience is in life. Because sometimes people cry and it gives us an opportunity to enter into a new uh, depth in our relationship with them. So Lord Jesus Christ, you cried. And that's hard to even imagine that the God who created the universe would weep at the death of a human being, somebody that you created, but also somebody that you knew and loved. And we pray that we, if we encounter people today or in this week that are at that point of sorrow in their own lives, or maybe where uh, we ourselves are going to enter into that kind of struggle, we pray that we would be able to uh, just enter into that and let it be. And let it be an opportunity for us to know each other deeper and to uh, serve each other in whatever way. And perhaps just by sitting with a person who's in the midst of that sadness. Thank you for not only showing us the way, but modeling for us what it means to be a person here on this earth. May we follow you as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, have a great day, everyone, and hopefully the sun will come out and it will be shining again.